So hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to share our antibody discovery strategies based on RIMMAP, RINLIGHT, RINLINO humanized mice, and our preclinical and clinical pipeline assets. So today's talk will include four parts. First, I will give a brief introduction about biocytogen. Then the features of the uh, antibody hum human mice called RIMMAP, RINLIGHT, or RINLINO will be presented. And I will show you some cases of how to use those mice uh, to generate fully human antibodies. Then I will show you our uh, discovery, uh, early discovery pipeline uh, based on our map his platform. And finally, I will uh, share our clinical and preclinical pipelines uh, for further um, or potential collaborations. So Biocytogen is a biotech company founded in 2008. And we have over uh, 1,200 employees. Um, so our company is focusing on antibody discovery, uh, disease models, and the preclinical testing uh, based on our uh, innovative mouse models. So in order to generate fully human antibody, we created a RIMMAPS platform, which includes three uh, mouse models, uh, the RIMMAP, RIMLIGHT, and the NANO for generating uh, either monoclonal antibody, bispecific antibodies, or nanobodies, respectively. So you may know that there are some an, uh, human antigens that are difficult to induce uh, immune response due to the high homology between hum human and mouse. So in order to make antibodies for those targets, uh, we knock out those target genes in the mice. Then uh, using these knockout mice, uh, we can uh, immune lab with the human antigens and generate a, a strong immune response. Then we can use the uh, beacon system to quickly obtain the antibody sequences in days. And then uh, those antibodies will run for the in vivo efficacy and safety screening. So we hope using this strategy, we can uh, find antibodies uh, be the, uh, finally be the um, possibly it be the first in class or best in class drugs, and also the antibodies for the challenging targets uh, like GPCR. So now uh, on our RIMMAS, uh, his platform, we have over 1,000 uh, potential targets uh, for the antibody discovery and uh, development. So our pipeline is focusing on the autoimmune, uh, immune oncology, uh, anti-inflammatory disease, and anti-infection. So we are also seeking for the potential collaborations for our pipeline assets in either uh, different formats like uh, monoclonal antibodies, uh, bispecific antibodies, ADC, um, cell therapy, and oncolytic virus, and so on. So Biocytogen has an uh, integrated antibody discovery platform. So with the strong uh, gene editing technology, we can make uh, different mouse models and cell lines uh, for our uh, drug discovery. And we have a large animal facility that can breed and provide uh, a large amounts of animals for the UL efficacy studies. So using the efficacy, uh, using the effective antibody discovery strategy, uh, we use the single B cell uh, uh, beacon system to quickly obtain the antibody sequences. And once we get those antibodies, we can run them in for the in vivo uh, efficacy and also the safety uh, test. Uh, we can also run the in vitro and ex vivo tests. So once we get the heating leads, uh, we can uh, start initiate the uh, clinical trials. Uh, now we already have three antibody drugs uh, in clinical phase one and phase two. So biocytogen has its own uh, integrated platform for antibody discovery from gene targeting uh, to the clinical uh, trials. So why do we need um, uh, antibody human mice uh, for the antibody generation? So if you look at the 51 approved antibodies from 2009 to 2018, so 39% of the uh, antibodies were generated from transgenic mice. And those antibodies generated from mice have better qualities, uh, largely due to the quality control check by the in vivo uh, immune system, and also avoid the potential issues uh, caused by the in vitro selections, especially those hydrophobic and all charged patches. 
So to make the fully human antibody, uh, we created a randomized platform. So in this randomized platform, we have three different, uh, different uh, human antibody models. The first one called RIMMAP for generating monoclonal antibodies. Then we have a common light chain uh, randomized mice that can um, be used for generating bi specific antibodies. And we also have a, a heavy chain only nano mice can generate uh, nanobodies. So based on these three different mouse uh, uh, lines, uh, we further knock, uh, knock out the target genes, then uh, using uh, human antigens to immunize the mice and using the beacon functional screening and the in vivo efficacy validation. So all this together make it possible to grab those high, high inputs that are traditionally difficult to reach. So let's look at uh, each individual uh, mouse line. So let's start from the red map. So uh, here is the list of human antibody mice uh, currently in the field. So uh, we can see that the, for the first uh, four uh, mouse lines, the Omni Red, PM mouse, uh, Zeno mouse, and Harbor transgenic mouse. So they all use uh, the knockout plus transgenic strategy to put in the human sequence, but randomly into the genome. Well, at the same time, knock out the mouse, the mouse gene. Uh, with the development of gene targeting technology, uh, later on, people can do the in situ uh, replacement. So put in the human uh, antibody sequences at the same place of the mouse uh, sequence. However, in these three mice, now the full on uh, uh, human antibody sequencing were, uh, were put in the mouse sequence uh, because of the limitation of the size of the uh, DNA fragment. Uh, but finally, we spent five years and end up with a, a mouse called RIMMAP. So, uh, and also using our uh, cutting edge megabase scale uh, chromosome engineering technology, we can replace the entire uh, human uh, IgG and the uh, IgG uh, carbonyl uh, and also the heavy chain uh, full on human sequence into the mouse genome. So, uh, in this mouse, we can generate antibodies uh, that uh, has more human-like repertoire and with the robust immune response and probably high clinical success rate. So all the uh, differences of RIMMAP uh, basically came from the unique uh, gene editing design. So uh, RIMMAP is the first mouse uh, with in-situ replacements of entire human uh, heavy chain and copper chain uh, variable region. And the mouse constant region is retained for normal B cell development. And in these mice, uh, we see that there is normal uh, immune organ development and robust immune response against strong or weak antigen immunization. And also the antibody isotype switching uh, was successful. So if you look at the CDR3 composition of the heavy chain, you can see they are very uh, high quality human-like VDG combination. So in these mice, we can gen generate antibodies with strong specificity, high affinity, and diversity. So let me show you a case that we use the RIMMAP to generate a, a, a fully human antibody against the COVID-19. So, uh, now the, the COVID-19 uh, is already um, uh, is a pandemic uh, outbreak disease. And, and the, like the other coronaviruses, the COVID-19 has some uh, specks protruding from its cell surface. And on these specks, there are two subunits, the subunit 1S1 and a subunit, subunit 2S2. The S1 is responsible for, for binding to its uh, receptor ACE2 on the cell membrane and allow the virus to enter the human cells. So in order to uh, inhibit the, uh, the binding between S the S1 protein and ACE2, we immunize our map with the S1 protein and generate antibodies against S1. As you can see on the right showing that we uh, can generate uh, antibody with different epitopes. And also the, the yellow circle showing that the binding region uh, between S1 and the, the, its receptor. 
and and we found that if we want to if you combine the antibody one the b1 and and antibody five uh, which have different totally um uh, binding epitopes uh, together though those two antibodies uh, will have stronger uh, inhibiting activity uh, than each in individual uh, antibodies so therefore we are doing a combination uh, cocktail therapy using those two antibodies for COVID-19. So in this case showing that in the map, we can generate antibodies that with high specificity uh, and also high affinity and more diversity. So beyond the map, uh, if you wanna make a best specific antibody, uh, red light is another uh, useful mouse tool. So red light is the mouse with a common uh, light chain, but the, the human uh, heavy chain sequence is still uh, entire. So in this mouse, uh, we can see that uh, we have certain uh, light chain combination. And compared to other uh, common light chain mice in the field, uh, we again, we are using an in-situ replacement and using the our cutting edge uh, gene editing uh, technology called chromosome engineering to put in the uh, the entire uh, heavy chain and certain combination of uh, of light chain into the mouse genome. So here is the uh, gene targeting technology design. So the heavy chain is completely uh, replaced by the human uh, VDG uh, fragments. For the light chain, we just choose uh, uh, each the certain uh, combination of VG uh, fragments. So in these mice, uh, you can first generate the the mouse antibody one recognizing uh, one uh, antigen and antibody two recognizing another antigen, and they they are using the same uh, common light chain. So then, when you make the bispecific antibody, you won't get the mispairing between the heavy chain and light chain. So here is a case that we uh, immunize the Rinland mice with uh, membrane protein. And on the left showing the uh, beacon uh, study. So we see some uh, uh, channels that is highlighted by the uh, white colors, indicating that inside that channel, uh, the plasma B cells can secreting uh, antibodies that recognizing specific antigens. Then once you get a sequence and you uh, purify the proteins, you get a, a binding affinity. So we can see all the antibodies generated from red light uh, have different uh, variable uh, affinities, ranging from 10 to the minus 6 to minus 10. So suggesting that red light is very productive uh, for antibody generation. So now we know that we have uh, red map for monoclonal antibody, we have red light uh, for bispecific antibodies. So, but how to use those mice to generate uh, fully human antibodies, uh, especially for those um, targets with high homology between human and mouse. So if you use the, uh, the regular uh, mouse uh, and immunize with the antigen, you won't get any um, uh, antibodies due to the back immune response. Uh, probably due to the uh, high homology between human and mouse. But if you knock out that target uh, gene, then immunize the KO mice, uh, you will get a very strong immune response, and also you will uh, yield a full repertoire of human antibodies and for further analysis. And those antibodies are, are probably uh, cross-reacts to different species. So uh, here, I just want to show you an example uh, of clouding uh, 18. So clouding 18 uh, plays important role uh, at the tight junction. And there are two extracellular loops of clouding 18.2. And on the extracellular two, uh, the sequence is 100% identical between uh, clouding 18.1 and 0.2. So if you want to get an antibody that recognizing only 18.2, you have to have the binding epitopes on the uh, extracellular one. However, if you look at the sequences of extracellular one, that is 100% identical between human and mouse. So if, if you just immunize the regular mice uh, you, with the 18.2, uh, you won't get any, any antibody. So our strategy, strategy is to knock out the 18, uh, clouding 18.2 first, 
then immunize that knockout mice with the sequences of the uh, extracellular one, then you will probably get antibodies that recognize in 18.2, but not 18.1, and also um, that may cross uh, with human animals because they, the sequence is 100% uh, identical. So that's easier for the further uh, in vivo efficacy studies. So here, just want to show you a case. A KO mice is very useful for uh, generating antibodies. And like the, the, that case, there are some more difficult targets, uh, like the uh, multi-pass membrane protein GPCR. So GPCR is the largest membrane protein family. And uh, among them, there are 370 druggable targets. If you look at the landscape, uh, majority of them are in the oncology fields, and also some in the metabolic disease and inflammation, inflammation disease. Uh, and um, most of the GBCR has high homology between human and the mouse. And to generate antibodies against GPCR, so we all use the local mice first, then immunize the mice with different uh, micers, and, and then try to increase the diversity of antibodies that we can produce. And uh, also, uh, once we get antibodies, they may cross with different species, uh, like a human, mouse, uh, monkey, dog, even dogs. So then for the downstream screening, we can uh, use uh, even uh, mouse and pets. So here is the list of our uh, pipeline of GPCR. And also, uh, if you are interested in any of them, uh, we can collaborate uh, on, on them uh, uh, in the future. So, uh, okay, so here uh, I just want to show you that biocytogen has its unique, unique techniques on antibody discovery. So we use target knockout uh, remote mouse and immunize that with our antigens. And using the beacon system functional screening, uh, we can quickly obtain the sequences of the antibodies. And those antibodies probably cross-react with different species. Then we run the in vivo efficacy first in the mouse uh, in the mouse clinical trials, and then uh, some leading hits will uh, be further tested in the in the for the safety, uh, like in dogs. And then uh, we can finally find the uh, candidates with the uh, good efficacy and less toxicity. Uh, they will then increase the successful rate in the clinical trials. So as you can see, uh, the mouse screening is uh, very important in, uh, in our uh, uh, whole process. So uh, besides uh, using the wild type mice to screen those antibodies that can cross with mouse, we also generate uh, amongst a lot of uh, target humanized mice uh, for screening antibodies that only recognizing uh, human targets. For example, uh, we have CTRA4 humanized mice, so can use uh, to screen for the CTRA4 antibodies. Now uh, you can see using this in vivo uh, study, we can quickly find the best candidate that with the, uh, the great uh, efficacy. And then uh, also we can see that we run, we run several projects already uh, for all these studies. So biocytogen uh, has a village of animal models. Um, so we generate a lot of uh, target humanized mice for in vivo efficacy studies. Uh, here I just leave some uh, examples uh, for immune checkpoints uh, for either single uh, humanized mice or double humanized mice for the combination of best 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 specific antibody combinations. Uh, other than the cancer immunotherapy, uh, we also develop uh, other disease models like autoimmune disease, uh, uh, metabolic disease, uh, bone disease, and others. So using these mice, uh, you can not only uh, look at the efficacy, you can, only, uh, you can also look at the, the mechanism of action. You can also study the toxicity, the PKPD, and also even the biomarker. So uh, here I just list that uh, the, our pretty early uh, discovery pipeline based on the RIMMAS his platform. So as I mentioned earlier, we have over 1,000 uh, targets for antibody discovery. And here I just list some uh, leading hits that for, for either the pet 
oncology, we have DOCS PD-1, DOCS CTL-4. Uh, for oncology, we uh, we have PD-1, CD-40 by specific antibody and others. We have also immune targets and infectious disease targets. So our map his platform also uh, is building uh, at a very high speed. And we have already uh, built some uh, collaborations, uh, especially the e exclusive partnership with our collaborators. And we are also looking for uh, more collaborations. So finally, just let me show you uh, our preclinical and clinical pipeline. So we have uh, uh, some uh, drug products that already in the clinical trial uh, one or trial two. And also we have the 4MBB antibody and PD-1 CD40 best specific antibodies and ready for anti filing pretty soon. Now I will show you uh, some data about these two antibodies uh, in the following slides. As I mentioned, we also have uh, two uh, dog uh, uh, antibodies. So for the uh, CTR4, OX40, and the CD40 antibody, we are currently running the uh, clinical trial one, uh, phase one. In the phase one, uh, either as a single drug or combined with um, each other, or with PD-1 or KDL1. So we are uh, probably uh, we will probably start the phase two trial uh, later this year. And the 4MBB antibody uh, is currently uh, ready for the ND filing. So let me show you some data about this antibody. So we have a, a, a unique uh, subclass of uh, IgG1 uh, in our uh, form BB antibody with enhanced uh, ADCC function. So but currently in the clinical stage, uh, other uh, form BB antibodies using IgG4 and IgG2 isoforms, uh, sub, like a subclass of uh, IFC. And, but our uh, Antibody showing better efficacy uh, in the mouse models. So as you can see in the form BB humanized mice, our antibody showing the best uh, anti-tumor activity as shown by the, ye uh, by the yellow line at the bottom compared to the uh, BMS uh, benchmark urea map. And also uh, combining uh, P uh, PD-1 uh, Antibody Kichuda with the form BB antibody also see a synergistic uh, effect, and this is better than the benchmark plus uh, Kichuda. And also, this drug uh, not only have better efficacy, it also have uh, reduced the uh, toxicities. So, in in the uh, humanized mice, we see that uh, our antibody uh, showed almost no increase of ALT and AST and also uh, lim limited uh, inflammation in the liver. So that's a pretty good uh, uh, potential targets um, and potential drugs. So we are running, uh, we are currently running uh, for the, uh, uh, we are currently doing the anti filing and hope to run the uh, phase one clinical trial later this year. Uh, now let me show you another one. So the YH008, uh, which is the first in class PD-1 and CD40 by specific antibody. So we generate this ant antibody uh, using this, this form, and IgG1 is non-functional. But the activation of CD40 signal is, is PD-1 dependent. And this antibody has nanomolar affinity, and, and also we see a pretty good uh, super uh, in vivo efficacy compared to each individual antibodies. And also compared to the, and also better than the combination of PD1 and CD40. And also in in vivo, uh, we also found that uh, this antibody, this bi specific antibody, is showing no sign of systemic toxicity, uh, as shown with uh, no increase of ALT, AST, and uh, no change of lymphocyte, and also the platelet. So that antibody we are. Uh, also preparing for anti filing and probably will start phase one trial next year. So that's uh, our technology and pipelines, and all of them are open for flexible uh, collaborations. You can either do the uh, antibody license licensing, uh, doing the antibody code development, and all the technology platform licensing, and also. Uh, there are existing um, collaborations already 
uh, for our pipelines that includes different formats. So you, we can also uh, work on the either the monoclonal antibody by specifics, uh, cell therapy, ADC, and oncolytic viruses. So if you are interested in any products uh, or technology or animal models, uh, please feel free to contact us. So, okay, so that's all I want to share for today. Uh, thank you for your attention.